I, I know what you're saying. This, this is obviously a man with a drinking problem. Not the case. It's quite the opposite. As a matter of fact, this is a man with a storage problem. I've got an issue. And I'm sure it's one that afflicts a lot of people who have their own shop. They make a project and always you have a board left over, two boards left over. Nothing is ever cut, so every single piece is ever used. So what you have are pieces like this. These were pieces that were left, and I think I showed you in a previous video. This is what I use for my work samples to show everybody what a piece of wood looks like in terms of that grade and that, that type. Uh, because instead of just throwing it out, I figure we can get some use out of it. If I look around this shop, and it is sure big, there are pieces of wood all over the place. I have pieces in a dumpster over there. I have pieces back there. I have a, a box of pieces over here, pieces by the glue table. There's a wheelbarrow full of pieces. And the question is, what do you do with all of this stuff? I, as I said to you before, have a really hard time trying to just jettison this stuff. When people say, okay, just take it to a fireplace and burn it have a real issue with it because this is material that's usually FAS, usually first and second. It's the best grade material that you could buy. And instead of just taking this and throwing it into the fireplace, to me, I always look at that as I'm burning money. I don't wanna do that. So how can I get rid of these little things? And I come up with these little quick hitter projects that I think for the most part, our students in this shop will use as Christmas gifts, a birthday gift, if they need something as um, an anniversary gift. What's an easy way that we can get rid of a little piece of material and not waste a lot? It's not like we have to take an entire board, a 12 foot board off that rack. So here's what I came up with. I saw this a while ago when I was in California and I thought it was really cool. Um, it's a one bottle wine holder. It's a bottle holder that just gonna put one bottle in it. And what's so cool is that it angles that bottle at exactly parallel surface to the table. I always like that. I've seen other ones where people will take a board, just bore a hole straight down into it, and then if they cut a 45 degree angle on their board, the end of the board, the, the wine bottle sticks up like that. And I don't think that's very cool. When I look, and what's great about ours, is that you can take a 750 milliliter bottle and do it, and usually it works successfully, or you can take a 1.5 liter bottle and put it in here and it will usually work out successfully as well. It's not a difficult thing. It's one of those uh, projects, to me, any student could make maybe in a day or two, maybe three if you're lazy, but you could knock this off pretty quick. I'm gonna try to do it in about 10 or 15 minutes at various stages. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna determine what wood do I wanna use and what wood's gonna get jettisoned. Well, I started walking around the back room and I, I came upon a piece of wood, and it's, it happens to be a piece of bird's eye maple that really has kind of a cool grain pattern to it. I really like the way it looked. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this one. I think that this one is really cool. There was another piece of wood that a student made um, a, a, a rack for, and what he did was he didn't like the wormholes that happened to be in this piece of oak. So what I did was, and it was a long piece, it was probably about 34 inches. What I did was I cut two pieces and I glued them edge to edge. And I'm gonna show you those. Um, I used the same gluing technique that we always use in here. I used my bar clamps and I clamped the board up. I probably did this maybe about an hour or so ago. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna break this down and I'm gonna send this to the surfacer to clean it up a little bit. I'll scrape it first. Then what we'll do is we'll take a look at how we're actually gonna bore the hole, drill the holes, uh, bore the holes, uh, cut it to width, and then go over to the chop saw and then cut a 45 degree angle. So here's my glue joint, still kind of a uh, little on the wetter side. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up first. 
The other thing that I determined when I looked at this board of bird's eye maple, this surface feels nice and smooth and even. This surface doesn't, feels rough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send both of these boards through the surfacer to clean them up, to get them to a nice smooth surface that I could work with and something that's gonna look actually pretty cool um, for my wine holders. Um, another time um, in another place, I had a whole bunch of different pieces of purple heart, of pieces of maple, pieces of walnut. And what I did was I just glued them all together. And I didn't glue it to a certain size, I just glued it as wide as I could to get rid of my pieces. I determined that I was able to make four wine bottle holders out of that, and all I was gonna do was just throw this stuff away. So you wanna be innovative when you think about this. Let's take a look at probably the most important part of this whole project, and that has to do with the jig that we're gonna use to drill the hole at a 45 degree angle. As many of you guys know, if I were to hold this board and put a drill bit in and try to hold this at 45 degrees, it'd be next to impossible, even though I did my push-ups today, yesterday, and the day before. So what I did to assist myself is I came over here to the drill press. I took some measurements. What I did was I took a scrap piece of plywood and I built this sled. Um, looks like a ramp to a, uh, an amusement park ride. This is at a 45 degree angle to this drill press. What I did was I centered an inch and a quarter hole directly inside the width of the opening that I want. If you're gonna make one of these, it takes a little bit of time to line up the exact center of the jig with the point because on the drill press, there's nothing that's exactly square. Um, it's a little tricky. If you happen to be doing it in this shop, you kind of luck out. So I'm gonna gear my instructions toward the people who are gonna do it in here, where all you have to do is cut your board to width and then drill your hole. But the critical measurement is that we get it to fit in here snug and tight. That's super critical. So let's take a look at my boards. <coughs> I mentioned to you already that this one has glue on it. <coughs> I never wanna take it over to the surface planer and surface it down with glue on it because that glue, especially if it's hard, tends to dull it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clamp it in the vise. I'm gonna use, once again, probably my most used piece of equipment in the shop, which happens to be a paint scraper. Put my glasses on. I'm just gonna take the excess glue off of here by putting a little bit of pressure on the scraper and kind of shearing this off. I'm gonna do this on both sides. I do it on this side and I'll do it on the other side. When I mentioned to you guys about gluing random pieces together, what you would do is you would scrape them before you're gonna put it on the surface planer. So keep that in mind. The gluing technique is exactly the same. We're gonna use a couple of bar clamps. The length of the piece that I wanna cut this to a minimum, I would like it to be 12 inches. So my piece of wood, and both of these I know are at least 12 inches long, for us to fit it in the jig, work safely on it, and have enough to cut off the end at a 45 degree angle, you just wanna make sure that you're at at least 12 inches. Um, 10 inches, a little too short. Uh, 12 inches is where you wanna go because the finished cut length of these pieces is actually gonna be 10 and 5 eighths. If you remember how to set up the surfacer to clean these two pieces up, I'll give you the initial setting. Both of these are hardwoods, which means they are both sent to us from the sawmill and the processor at 13 sixteenths of an inch thick. I want to take off as little as I possibly can to get a clean a finish as I possibly can on both of these surfaces. So let's take a walk over to the surface planer. To determine that setting of almost 13 sixteenths of an inch, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen up the gold adjusting knob, and by using this crank wheel, I move it counterclockwise to drop the table. I'm gonna drop the table down so it goes at least to an inch or a little bit below. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise it up 
two lines above an inch. And to do this, oh yes, it's bifocal time. I'm gonna crank the wheel up so I go two lines above an inch, which is where I hit that right now. Now what I'm gonna do is take the crank wheel and I'm gonna go one complete turn clockwise. So right there should be my initial setting of about zero. Remember, I don't wanna take, oh, I wanna take off as little as I possibly can. So when I do this, I wanna make sure that it's not like the chippers that are cutting the trees through the streets in the summertime where you hear, I don't want that. I wanna take off either nothing or as little as I possibly can. I'm gonna put my safety glasses on, roll my sleeves up a little bit. What I'm gonna do is turn the machine on. I'm gonna send both of these pieces through. Worst side, remember, facing up. Worst side is gonna face up. on my jig to see how wide these pieces have to be cut. So if I walk over here to the drill press, and if you take a look at the top of this, this looks like it's a little bit less than three, maybe about two and seven eighths wide. So both of my pieces obviously won't fit in here. I have to cut these so they fit in here snug and I'm able to clamp them down and drill my hole at a 45 degree angle. To do this, what I want to do is make sure I put a machined edge on both these pieces. So where am I going to do that? Oh, oh, the jointer? Oh, okay. Yeah, come on, come on. I don't know that these edges are machined. I'm assuming that they are. But what I'm going to do is just send them through the jointer one time. And then I'll be able to put the jointed edge up against the fence on the table saw and then rip them to about two and seven eighths wide. Sleeves rolled up, glasses on, right thumb on the back end of my board, and I'm gonna send it in. Again, all my pressure is in the back, takes my time and I go slow. That's a nice, clean, jointed edge. 
So what I'm gonna do to make sure that I don't forget which edge is jointed, I just put that X on the jointed edge. I'll bring this one over to the table saw. I'll do the same thing with this board. Uh, I really like these holes. <coughs> that was a cough. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna joint this edge. I look at the grain to determine which way, which direction. <coughs> Another cough. And that's a good cleaned edge now as well. I'll put an X on this edge. I'm gonna shut this off. Let's go to the table saw. Now here's the story. I said it was two and seven eighths. I don't know that it's exactly two and seven eighths. All I know is that if I cut these boards and they're less wide than two and seven eighths and they're flopping around, my hole that I'm gonna drill down for the bottle to go in is not going to line up exactly centered. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I cut my piece the exact width of that jig. I have two great pieces here. I don't want to take a chance on screwing up either one of these. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get this old piece of scrap pine that somebody used to route a letter on here. I'm going to take this, go over to the table saw, cut it, and I'm going to see if it fits onto my jig. So I'm going to set this to where I think it is, two and seven eighths, then I'm going to make it a little bit more than two and seven eighths. I'm gonna go about two and maybe 15 sixteenths. With the guard down so that you guys can see this, I'm gonna use a push block, take this machined edge, put it up against the fence, and I'll rip my board. Remember, don't do this unless you're either supervised, woodshop teacher's there, or you're comfortable doing this because you've done it before. My hands, sleeves, Eyeglasses, everything is on. I'm all set, ready to go. L with my left hand, my push block on the back end of the board. I'm going to send my string through. I'm going to drop my left hand, and I'm going to push the board all the way through. What you do? Nope, I'm not grabbing that. I don't care if that thing stays or until the cows come home. Let it stay. Let's see if this fits on my jig. Come on. Come on, Jackson. I hope it doesn't fit. If it fits and it's loose, that's not good. Then I'm gonna have to get another scrap piece and test it out with another scrap piece. So I'm gonna take this board, place this in here, and man, that does fit a bit. Well, it doesn't fit at all, I'll tell you the truth. If I look at this, it looks to me like it's maybe about a 16th of an inch too wide. Let's go back to the table saw. So when you think about this, you go, oh my God, all the way back to the table saw. Let's see, it's 14 steps. Wow, that's tough. I better double check on this measurement because I only want to move in about a sixteenth of an inch. It doesn't matter what edge I use on this one because they're both machine now. With the same practice, though, with my left hand, hold the stock down, right hand on my push block, and the assembly it through. And the same thing is true. I don't want this to be loose. I want it to be a snug, tight fit. Oh, man, that's a hair. No, no, no. That's definitely still too big, too wide. Let's bring it back. How funny is this gonna be when I make this cut and it's too loose? And again, I'm doing this on a piece of scrap wood. So this is now 42 steps. Oh, <laughs> you know what they say, the third time is a charm. Look at how that fits. Oh, baby. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.
That's when you know there's a God. You're not going to hit the lottery, kids. But I will tell you, when you need a piece of wood to be cut perfectly even, there's always somebody upstairs who helps you. Let's cut my two pieces. And we'll see if we can't get those ready to drill. Remember, I jointed it. Now, I made a couple of cuts in between, so that would be enough time for me to forget which is the jointed edge. It was a good thing I marked it because I know that this edge is going right up against the fence. Mark it, dude. Check. I'm going to make an L with my left hand, push back, and I'll cut both pieces. Watch that piece. Watch that piece. Watch that piece. Don't grab it. Don't grab it there, Jackson. I shut it off, and I take a walk over here. If that decides to take a walk back, back at me, it's not going to be a fun experience. So there's my piece of oak, my wormy piece of oak. By the way, I never knew that there was um, an issue. Some people have issues with holes, like on pieces of wood. I, 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 I found that to be revelation to me. Uh, I never knew that holes bothered some people. Water bothers me. Uh, which is the jointed edge? There it is. There's my X edge. I think I drowned in a previous life because I can't swim. I used to have an issue going over bridges when I was a kid. I don't want to take a plane and go all the way to Hawaii. If it crashes, I, 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 I couldn't swim six hours. You know what I'm saying? Oh, with my left hand, push block on it, I'm gonna send it all the way. All the way, all the way, there's all the way. Now let's take a look at these boards. These boards are both longer, and if you look at this, I know I glued this one up. This one I don't trust. I have no idea if it's square or not. I gotta square an end so I can put it up against the end of this jig. So keeping in mind, whatever piece I square is what I'm gonna keep. That's gonna be the end of the board and whatever's on the outside or on the top of the jig, I'm gonna cut off. So which side do I wanna keep? If I look at this, I'm gonna let the grain and everything determine. It looks like there's there's more grain over here with this bird's eye maple here. So let me, I'm gonna square this end. I'm gonna square that end. And on this one, I said I like the holes. That's kind of cool. Um, which, I don't know, what do you think? I got more holes over here on this side. Maybe I'll go with this. Maybe I'll square this end. Let me square this, this end over here. All right, let's take a walk over. Where are we gonna square a board? Miter saw. Easiest thing you've ever done. Remember, I don't wanna take a whole lot out of this, off of this, I just wanna square an end. So I take my board, put it up against the fence. I'm gonna use my left hand, always away, never right up against the blade. I'm gonna slide it in until it hits about midway into that saw cut. And I'm gonna be cutting off probably about an eighth of an inch. And remember, I said this piece is definitely uh, longer than 12 inches, so I definitely have enough time. <laughs> it out to the side. That's my squared end. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put an X on the squared end. Mark it, dude. Thanks, Donnie. Now I said I was going to square this end. What I'm going to do is, again, put it about midway into that saw cut. And with my left hand all the way to the left, I'll square this end. <laughs> Perfectly good. Woo! Throwing rocks tonight. Mark it, dude. <laughs> the next thing that we're going to do is determine where we want to drill the hole on this. Because that hole will determine the side we're going to see and where the bottle's going to go. Let's take a walk back to the drill press.
This is a great example of one of these and it's almost done. Really cool. This person decided that they wanted to make it out of Cypress. What I really like about the Cypress grain is that when you stain this, the grain is really gonna pop. But what side are we gonna see? When I put a bottle on here, remember, we're gonna see this side. We really don't see a whole lot to that side. And it's a shame because the grain on this side is equally as nice as the grain on this side. So what we wanna do is we wanna look at and evaluate what side do I wanna see on this? Do I want the hole to go over here and then the bottle's gonna go in this way? Or do I wanna see this side? Duh. Yeah, this, if I wanna see the holes, I want it over here. So I'm just gonna put a little mark there so I know I'm gonna bore my hole there. On this one, remember we said we're gonna keep this side. That was our squared end. This looks really cool. That's good. I think I like this side better on the outside to see it, so I'm gonna draw a little circle over there. I know <coughs> most people would look at this and say, what's the big deal? Just put it in there and drill the hole. <coughs> but little things like this do make a difference. And I always say to you, everything that you're gonna do in here, each step that you're gonna take will determine how good the project is. If you just say, I just wanna get it done, just wanna finish it, well, It'll look like that. And 30 years from now, you'll look at it and you'll go, you know, hey, I, I really like this side better. Um, things like that are gonna matter a long time from when you finish the project. So right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this board, I'm gonna put it into this jig, I'm gonna uh, roll, uh, push it down, I'll clamp it up, and I'm gonna drill my hole. After I do that, then what I wanna do, because these, ah, these are sharp edges, I'm gonna take it over to the router table. I'm gonna round it over. After I round it over, I'll sand it up. I'll decide how I wanna finish it. I'm gonna finish this thing before I do anything else. Then the very last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this angle. So again, I'm probably, with all this talking, maybe 25 minutes into this little delivery. What I'll do is I'll clamp it up. I'll see you jokers back here to bore the hole, route it, cut it, sand it, finish it, and you'll have a project done in two days. Have a great one.